Thanks for joining me for What I'm Not Podcasting. I hope you will like, share, and subscribe to this video. And of course, subscribe to the audio and subscribe to the podcast, What I'm Not Podcasting, wherever you find your podcasts. Moving on. OnlyFans. Now, I've been talking about sports and COVID for the last few weeks. I wanted to go ahead and jump off of that because I know all of you would rather hear the more salacious sex kind of talk, more dating talk than I normally uh, am accustomed to talking to on this program because I noticed my numbers and I noticed that quite a few women, more women than men, listen to this program, of which I am thankful for all of you lovely ladies because I know all of you, regardless if I ever get to take a look at you or get to know you at all, I'm sure you're lovely inside and out. And I'm also a body positive uh, kind of guy as well. You know, I, I believe in that movement as well. Just the same. Now, OnlyFans. The Guardian asks the question, is it time for the cash strap masses to fire up our webcams and join? So now more content creators are looking forward to be joining because obviously OnlyFans took off for subscribers, took off for new content creators in March as the pandemic came. We are five months since then. And there we go. <laughs> the Guardian writes in now about through every shock to the economy, every wave of layoffs and furloughs, platforms have been here for us. And OnlyFans is the other one that goes along with that, along with the normal comforts and things that we have that have been much more common to use, say Uber or Lyft or, you know, Substack or Patreon or things like that. Now, OnlyFans which was originally used by cam girls and sex workers to broadcast sexual fantasy performance to paid viewers without the need for the traditional producers and distributors of the sex work world. Now content creators of all kinds are encouraged to join the site and perform a highly edited version of themselves to attract fans with money, create parasocial relationships or simping with their audiences and monetize their daily lives. So the original user cries gentrification, labor advocates cry exploitation. And this writer, Jessica Crispin, embraces change. She says she already has optimized her home, cat, writing, jokes, and pastimes for monetization and image maintenance on platforms like Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon. Now I have a place where I can sell, bo sell both my ass and my soul, completing the package. So in this, they say, it's easy to get started. Simply ask yourself. Every single time you have an experience, if I broadcast this, will someone pay me to watch it? If anyone wants to pay me to watch me weep quietly in the bathtub, let me know. The way things are going, I can make a daily show of it without much effort, and I can really use the cash. This is fucking weird. I can't believe she's even getting into this, but again, this is where if you want to do stuff on here, fetish, you know, show, show parts of your body that you don't mind showing. Sometimes you don't want to show your face. Sometimes you do or wear it behind a mask, whatever you want. The idea is, you know, this writer is getting into the mindset of those that are jumping in. And I don't like the idea of having this woman have, you're trying to create this mindset that, you know, uh, if this is her mindset, I don't think this is what every other girl does. I think the idea is, could really use the cash? Absolutely. Because there are no more sugar daddies. And we know about that because of the fact that it just... The traveling, the interaction that the sugar daddy wants with the sugar baby is not there. It's because there's no availability for that. And that's why. So that's what we're stuck with. Now, what's more that we're in lockdown, we have any number of very lonely people eager and ready to pay you to pretend to be their friend. If they take it too far and start getting confused about whether you're actually romantic with them, that is frankly not your responsibility. That's correct. Okay. With the economic future, sign up for models and OnlyFans have been increasing fast. Don't be afraid of a little competition. No, that's wrong. That is wrong because of the fact I've already talked about before. Amateurs going up against the professionals. We already saw stories and I've, I've reported stories. And if you're looking on the YouTube, I'm going to put past links of previous OnlyFans stories. If you want, just go and scroll back to previous episodes of One I'm Not Podcasting, the good reference. But we've talked about the fact that girls like this, She's putting the wrong mindset in there because you might only get maybe a month's worth of attention. So that's it. You have to really be able to get, put things out there to really benefit the the viewers and the followers and the subscribers. But if you think you're just going to put something up there and just say, hey, you know, it's going to be easy money. No, it might be easy to get money the first time, 
but then you don't know if it could get pirated. You don't know if other people are going to be looking at the videos as well because it will get picked up by somewhere else. I mean, I just saw Bella Thorne put up a page, and there's already people already pirating it right off the bat. Not any question. Cardi B has a page. There's so many other girls right now that have it. And just like, well, why not? You know, they want to go ahead and put themselves out there. Got it. Okay, make the point. But again, it doesn't make a difference at all. It's like you don't understand what's going to happen by doing this. It's just it's not good. Like you don't realize if you're going to get into this, know what you're getting yourself into. And it's not just because I need the cash. It's a matter of that this girl makes it sound like it's just so easy. So here we go. She also says that your product being your actual self, of course, just think of competition, helping a little friend, to help a little friend sitting on your shoulder, reciting all your flaws and everything about yourself, you need to improve every waking moment of every day. There's absolutely no reason for you to do everything it takes to fix those flaws. And she talks about discarding old friends who have no clout, and when you accomplish the vanquishing of one flaw, eight will magically appear in this place. You'll never be bored again. So, in return, she says that the market will tell you whether or not your life has value. Think you look good in that selfie? Prove it. Likes don't mean anything anymore. You've got to see what people will pay for it. You think you're pretty smart. This is horrible. Jessa, what are you doing here about making girls feel like they need to go ahead and put their vanity up for bid to see what kind of money they can get? That's horrible. Listen, women that are blessed with beauty... And blessed with looks or shapes that are appealing to a guy or a gal or whatever. And the guy is the same thing. If you're going to be using that, your youth, your beauty, or your hand, your, your good looks, and you're going to go ahead and put that out there, just realize, okay, yeah, you're putting it out there just like other Playboy models have done back in the day or penthouse models or girls who got into porn or guys that got into porn. We know there's a lot of gay porn out there and it does very well. Just saying. I got the report on the old adult industry. I know there's more money in gay porn than there is in straight. That's just plain out simple. Now, with that, this thought right here about Jessica Crispin is a bad thought. To go ahead and try to say, well, you want to look at your flaws and then just let people go ahead and pick them out. Well, you can't worry about that. I mean, if you're getting on here, it's not a matter of that. Like The thing is, you're performing for them. You shouldn't be just just showing off. You're performing for them or you're showing off your goods. If you're going to do that, then let them be worried about that. But I'm telling you, if you're going to think that you're going to just let people go ahead and value and judge you like a model, that's a horrible thing to do. Models already enough that are very beautiful are so damn conscious about it. And I, and I feel bad, of course. I wish every model out there, I wish every TikTok girl that was out there that was beautiful, that is beautiful, would not get so caught up about how they feel about their looks because they feel like they have to question them when the truth is, you know, you talk about women that are, the more beautiful they are, the harder for them to, to feel their self-esteem that they feel like they have the beauty that they have. And those that realize it benefit. And thus it's those that do find out what their beauty is or what they have that's really of a value that really makes a difference. But again, if you're using the beauty that you have, using your body that you have for the meantime, it's just like a stripper, right? Or adult entertainer. Same idea. You're doing this to get yourself ahead because you're using what you got while you have it. If that's how you want to do this, that's how OnlyFans should be perceived. But then also realize that with the advantage of making money off of it are the bad parts. Like the strippers have stalkers and have people that are coming around simping along, feeling that they're going to have some romantic attachment. Same thing can happen right here on the internet. Just keep that in mind. In the story, she closes out and asks for the, well, there's a lot more she says, but I'm going to just take this point right here. The, as for the losers, those who can't make themselves pretty enough for the webcam, who can't find their best angles, who can't find anyone who wants them, the, wants them to, to read children's stories topless, who can't be their best selves, they can either find a cash to reward the ones who can, and they can simply disappear from view. If you can't see them, do they actually even exist? Now, if you excuse me, I've got to go contour my face to make myself look a little less like myself. I have a date with a webcam in an hour. Let's make some money, girls. And this sucks, man. I don't like hearing about this, but again, uh, Jessica Crispin, if you go back and look at what she's written, she is the founder and editor of a book a magazine's book, Slut and Spoilia, and author of the Le De Le Dead Ladies Project. Um, she's also 
an author of one of the books that she wrote, which is including why I'm not a feminist, why I'm not a feminist, a feminist manifesto. So look, she is encouraging the idea of getting into this, but I don't like the reasons why she does. Like if girls want to do this, I'm just telling you, you're doing it the same way a stripper or adult entertainer or a cover model or a model does. You're using body for what you want to use it for. If you want to use it for adult purposes or you want to just use it for beauty just to go ahead and like, you know, pose. And the problem is that some of the women that wanted to do this as an influencer for fashion or clothing or whatever, they're doing this because if they're not able to go out and showcase the product or get products sent to them so they can actually, you know, flaunt it and do whatever, then they need to find other ways to go and keep going. So some of them are taking the risk of going on OnlyFans. And I can't believe how many girls are doing that. It's to your own peril. Just be careful, girls and guys. And we'll leave it there. We'll talk to you next time.